Tick tock, time to rock. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live and we're going to have a debate between Anthony Rogers and Adamu Bakari from Nigeria, I believe. And uh, while everyone files in the room here, I'm just going to lay out the rules that we're going to follow. Uh, first, I wanted to, I've never done this before. I've never had multiple people on at the same time. So we want to do a quick uh, test to make sure that we can hear everyone. Uh, first, um, everyone tell me if you can hear me. Now there's a little delay, so say yes, we hear you clearly, David. And uh, so I'll see your comments on that. And Anthony, why don't you go ahead and say hi to everyone and then everyone tell me if you hear Anthony clearly. Hey, it's great to be with you all. I'm looking forward to the debate. I'm looking forward to it, Adamu. And Adamu, can you uh, can you go ahead and say hi to everyone, and we'll know that we can hear you. Hi, I'm Adamu Bakari from Nigeria. I'm saying hi to everybody who is listening to us right now. To have a good debate between me and, and Tony Rogers, inshallah. All right, so everyone says they can hear me clearly. They say they can hear Anthony clearly. Let's just wait for confirmation that they can hear Adamu. Let's see. Let's see. All right, everyone says they can hear everyone clearly. I'll try to adjust volume levels um, as we go on. But let me just lay out the rules now. First, the topic, which you can see in the description box, is who is the true God, the Yahweh of the Bible or the Allah of the Quran? Uh, our participants, Anthony Rogers and Adamu Bukhari. The format is going to be eight-minute opening statements from each side, followed by five-minute first round of responses from each side, uh, five-minute second responses, five-minute third responses, and then five minutes each for concluding comments. And then we'll go ahead and wrap up. We might have a little period of Q&A from... Um, from our speakers at the end to ask each other questions. Maybe if there are uh, any questions that seem particularly relevant from the chat, we might take a couple of those. But uh, we're gonna have about maybe 30 minutes of Q&A afterwards. So we're going to go ahead and get started. The way I'm going to be doing time, I will start, uh, I will start the timer once I hear whoever's speaking uh, speak. And then I'll announce when there's one minute left and then when he's done, I'll say time, but he can finish up the, the sentence that he's on. He doesn't have to like cut off in mid-sentence or anything. All right, so we're going to be starting off with Anthony. Anthony, are you ready? I'm ready. In the world are you drinking? Coffee. Okay. That's, good. That's brain food. Yes. All right, so Anthony, you're going to have eight minutes. I will start the timer when you start speaking. All right, I want to begin by giving all praise and thanks to Yahweh, the only true triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, petitioning him to be with me as I speak and in his graciousness to open the eyes of my opponent and other Muslims who are listening. According to the Quran, which my opponent takes as authoritative, the scriptures that were in the possession of Muhammad's Jewish and Christian contemporaries, which we still possess today, were the inspired, authoritative, and preserved word of God. This is why Jews and Christians were told in Surah 5, 44 through 48, that God gave them the scriptures. Those scriptures presently contain guidance and light, and therefore Jews and Christians are to judge by those scriptures in their possession. Indeed, according to these verses of the Quran, any Jew or Christian who doesn't judge by those scriptures is, is considered an unbeliever and an evildoer. So if my opponent in this debate calls me away from those scriptures and tells me not to judge by them, he is calling me to kufr and evil doing, and thus is aligning himself with Satan, according to his own book. Moreover, even Muhammad, my opponent's false prophet, who was often nagged with doubts about the veracity of his revelations, was told by his familiar spirit in Surah 1094 to go and ask the Jews and Christians to see if what he's saying agrees with what was revealed to them. Quote, if you are in doubt, O Muhammad, about that which we have revealed to you, then ask those who have been reading the scripture before you. End quote. Since Muhammad was told to test and confirm the validity of his revelations by the previous scriptures, then all the more must my opponent's remarks be submitted to and judged by the Holy Scriptures. Otherwise, he exalts himself up over his own prophet and contradicts what his own God told him. Well, in light of this, the question we're debating really comes down to this. 
Does the Quran present a consistent picture of Allah that comports with what Yahweh said about himself in the previous scriptures, or does the Quran rather have a falling out with itself, claiming on the one hand to be uh, presenting the same God who revealed himself in the prophetic and apostolic writings, but then contradicting what the prophets and apostles said about Yahweh, the true God? Well, to answer this question, I'll simply look at three critical areas. First, the attributes of Yahweh in comparison to Allah. Second, the character of Yahweh in comparison to Allah. And thirdly, the identity of Yahweh in opposition to Allah. Well, first then, with respect to God's attributes, the God of Muhammad very clearly doesn't have the same nature and attributes as the, the triune God Yahweh revealed in the Bible. Whereas Yahweh, just to take three examples, is omnipresent, omniscient, and incorporeal, Muhammad's pagan deity was none of those things. <clears throat> With respect to omnipresence, while the God of the Bible can manifest himself in special ways to angels and saints in heaven and to people on earth, he is not limited to or confined by any of those self-expressions. For example, while Yahweh promised to dwell in a special way in the temple, Solomon said in 1 Kings 8, the heaven of heavens cannot contain you, how much less this house which I have built. The same thing is stated by the Apostle Paul in Acts 17. Well, in contrast to this, the God of the Quran is not omnipresent. According to the Quran, Allah is not in this dunya. He's not in this earth. Rather, according to Surah 754, 10.3, uh, 13.2, 20 verse 5, and numerous other passages, Allah is sitting on a throne. Moreover, according to Surah 3975, 40 verse 7, 6917, that throne is surrounded and supported by eight angels. Accordingly, Allah is not omnipresent like Yahweh. He does not, as Yahweh said in Jeremiah 23, fill heaven and earth. Another attribute of the true God not possessed by Allah is the attribute of incorporeality, meaning that God is, God is a spirit and does not have a limiting form or anatomical features. This not only follows from the fact that God is omnipresent and transcends all spatial limitations, but also from the explicit statement of the Lord Jesus Christ in John 4.24, God is spirit. Allah, on the other hand, very clearly has a form. In a Sahih narration, Muhammad said, I saw Allah, the exalted and glorious, in the most beautiful form. In the same hadith, Muhammad speaks of Allah placing his palm and fingers on Muhammad's back between his shoulder blades. In short, Allah, according to Muhammad, is not an infinite spirit, but a being with form and features, just like all the pagan deities which Muhammad grew up worshipping. And so Allah cannot be the same as Yahweh, who was proclaimed by the prophets, the apostles, and the Lord Jesus Christ. A final attribute of the true God that Allah does not possess is the attribute of omniscience. According to the Bible, the true God knows everything. Indeed, this is why the Bible is full of detailed predictions that came to pass. While Allah, on the other hand, does on occasion pretend to know everything, he quite often gives the lie to this claim. For example, over and over again in the Quran, Allah speaks with less than absolute certainty. Instead of saying things like, thus saith the Lord, Allah says stuff like the following in Surah 2044, speaking of Pharaoh. Perhaps he may accept admonition. Speaking of non-Muslims in Surah 2186, he says, perhaps they will go aright. 651, perhaps they will fear. 665, perhaps they will understand. 669, perhaps they will be saved, etc. Clearly, the Allah of the Quran is not the Yahweh of the prophets, but an ignorant being masquerading as the true God. A second area of interest that openly exposes that Allah is not the true God can be seen by looking at the character of Yahweh and the character of Allah. One of the best ways to see the character of Yahweh and the character of Allah is to compare and contrast how Yahweh and Allah respond to sin. Muslims often argue that the Old Testament can't be trusted because it portrays certain figures like King David as imperfect human beings. Muslims also believe that Muhammad is the perfect pattern of conduct, Surah 3321, that is, the person who best reflects what pleases Allah. What Muslims fail to see is how this actually proves that Yahweh is holy and Allah is evil. After all, when David sinned by committing adultery with Bathsheba, Yahweh sent the prophet Nathan to rebuke David and told David that as a consequence of his sin, divine chastisement would follow him the rest of his life. Contrast this with how Allah responded to Muhammad's evil actions. For example, when Muhammad expressed his lust-filled desires for the wife of his adopted son and then proceeded to marry her, which led the Arabs to uh, get in an uproar, Allah, instead of rebuking and chastising Muhammad, allegedly gave a convenient revelation justifying Muhammad's sin, thereby becoming complicit in Muhammad's evil deeds. 
The same thing can be seen when Muhammad ordered assassinations, robbed caravans, and destroyed the lives and properties of others. In every case, rather than rebuke and punish Muhammad, Allah was always quick to say, that a boy, great job, Muhammad, that's what I like to see. Finally, the identity of the true God is that of Father, Son, and Spirit, according to the Bible, whereas Allah is unipersonal, according to the Quran. One minute. For example, in Genesis 1, the first chapter of the Bible, because Yahweh is presented as creating all things by his word and spirit, he said the following upon the creation of man, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. In agreement with this, the Apostle John, speaking of Jesus as the divine word and son, says that he was with God the Father and therefore also with the Spirit when all things were made. And so according to the prophets, the apostles, uh, Yahweh is triune. This is why Jesus himself said in the initiatory rite of induction into the Christian fold that people are to be baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In contradiction to this, Muhammad, although quite confused about who the members of the Trinity are, rejected the Trinity in Surah 4, 171. He rejected the fatherhood of God and the sonship of Christ in Surah 112 and, and so forth. Very clearly, Allah is not triune and so denies the Father and the Son, which St. John in 1 John 2 says is the very definition of Antichrist. Time. And so in conclusion, there's no God but Yahweh and Muhammad is an Antichrist and purveyor of a false God. All right. Uh, Anthony went about eight seconds over, so I'm going to make sure uh, Adamu has that same opportunity. Adamu, are you ready? Yes. Okay, I will start your eight-minute opening statement when you start speaking. Okay. Okay, so I, I will start by saying that there is oh, no uh, any uh, 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 Adamu, uh, let, me start, let me start that over. I just wanted to say, uh, because people are asking... Um, asking uh, why they can't see you. They think it's a technical problem. Uh, we, only have, we only have Adamu on by audio, everyone. So that's not, a, that's not an error. Uh, that, that's the feed we have uh, coming, from, uh, coming from his home right now. So he's, he's audio only. So that's not just you not being able to see him on the screen. He's audio only. So I'm going to go ahead and start your time over when you, uh, when you start speaking, Adamu. Okay. There is no any evidence which clearly proves your reasonable doubt that God ever sent any book to any of the Bible writers, any chapters of the Bible writers offers to any Bible writers from God. God did not inspire or reveal any word of the, uh, of the Bible to any of the Bible writers. Antonio Rogers have to note this first. God did not reveal any words from the God. There is no any clear revelation John did not uh, receive any. We don't even know who is John, Matthew, Mark, and and, and 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 Luke. We don't even know their biographies. No anybody know their original biographies. No anybody know that whether these people are bad people or good people. There is no any clear evidence. Paul himself, according to Paul, he claimed that he saw Jesus on his way to Damascus, of which he contradicted himself. In Acts chapter nine, verse seven, verse uh, Acts chapter nine, verse seven, verses Acts chapter twenty-two, verse nine, he contradicts himself in Acts chapter, Act chapter twenty-two, verse uh, uh, seven, and Acts chapter twenty-six, verse fourteen. Paul contradicted himself that those people are with him; they didn't see anybody, but they hear a voice. In another chapter, he said that. Those people see the, uh, see they didn't see anything, but they hear the voice. So he contradicted himself here. Even though that all the chapters he wrote in the Bible, they were not inspired word of God. He concocted and fabricated all these chapters. They are not, there is no any clear evidence that God revealed that chapters to Paul. No any clear evidence. No any clear evidence that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were good people or bad people. No any clear evidence that God revealed all these verses, chapters to those people. So how can we be sure that it is Yahweh who sent this Bible, Bible to these people? First of all, we have to understand that first. Even though in the creations of human beings, according to Yahweh, he created human beings in his own image. Do God God is supernatural, superhuman. There is no way a God can be like a human being. 
So, to talk of God created man in the human, this thing, that's qualify, disqualify Yahweh as God, the real God, uh, the real God of universe. Secondly, if we look at how the attribute of Yahweh, according to Bible, he is a very weak and powerless God. Every human being, every nation, want his, he want his God to be hero. How can a God will be beaten and wrestled down by a joker, according to Bible, according to Genesis 32? How can God, a whole Yahweh, can be beaten and wrestled down by, by how can a God be kidnapped according to Luke 4, verse 2? Look, uh, Satan cannot uh, God of the Bible for good 40 days. And God of the Bible has no even has no even has power to forcefully use his power to free himself from the, the, the Satan trap. How can that uh, be attribute or features of God? How can that be features of God? God needs to be more powerful no omnipotent. You said God is Allah is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Let me tell you one thing: Allah is in His throne, but He is controlling. He, he is hearing. According to Quran, Allah is hearing every mind of human being. Not even mind. He is hearing even how plants lives. According to Quran, Allah is in control of everything. He described how he, 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 he created this world. He described how he made human being stage by stage, what we call in biology, which you have, uh, uh, I believe you know this thing. He has described everything in the Quran. Stages by stages. He give us, Allah, Allah explained how he he made all things possible. He created. He gave us life. He made a, 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 how we live in this country, in the world at large. He made a, a excuse me. Sir. institution for us which is the Quran you met how to how how are we going to live in this world <laughs> by he give us what we can benefit or what can benefit us and what we can have our life but Yahweh in the Bible did not provide all these things he did not plant Christians life according to how this world is running there is nothing Yahweh did in this world for the benefit of humanity. The only thing Christians are claiming is that he sent his only begotten son. I don't understand, according to which grammatical English, that a God, a single person, can divide it into three. I don't understand. We have, we have attended schools, but in our schools, in English class, we are not taught that Three persons can be single one. Bible was translated into English language for everybody to understand it. So there is no way a Yahweh of the Bible can be the true God of this world. There is no way. Bible is safe. There is no any evidence that he revealed that Bible. So how can we be sure that this Yahweh is the true God of this World. One minute. Jesus himself clearly proved that. You people claim that Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is the only, you have only one God. Jesus is the son of, son of God. And that's why the fact that in reality, Jesus has no any son. So how can Jesus be God or the only one God you are claiming is Yahweh? What evidence do you have that? To claim that Jesus is the only God. That's why he has no any son. You people claim that Jesus has a son. Where is Jesus' son? 
Do you, did Jesus have a son? According to Trinity, he has no any son. So how can we, you people claim that uh, 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 Yahweh is the true God of this? Well, just by the fact that in Bible you, you might mention that God killed the, 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 the Saint Prophet Muhammad Sallam to commit various atrocities. Look at the Bible. There are many chapters in the Bible Time. that, according to calculation, you are God killed more than two million innocent people. I'm done. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we have our opening statements for everyone who is tuning in right now. In case you missed the beginning when we were talking about uh, what's going on here, this is a debate between Anthony Rogers and Adamo Bacardi. Uh, they're debating who is the true God, the Yahweh of the Bible or the Allah of the Quran. We just finished our opening statements, eight-minute opening statements from each of our participants, and now we're going to go into the first round of responses. So each participant will have five, minute e five minutes each here. And Anthony, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, five minutes for Anthony Rogers. All right, in my opening presentation, I pointed out that the Quran says that the scriptures that were given to the Jews and Christians that were in the possession of Muhammad's contemporaries are, in fact, the word of God, according to the Quran. I cited the verse 544 through 48, which my opponent should be familiar with. Now let me read it to him. In 544, Allah says, Indeed, we sent down the Torah in which is, present tense, guidance and life. The prophets who submitted to Allah judged by it for the Jews, so did the rabbis and scholars by that which they were entrusted with of the scriptures of Allah. It goes on to say, so do not fear the people, but fear me, and do not exchange my verses for a small price, like Adamu is asking me to do. He says, whoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed, then it is those who are the disbelievers. The same thing is said in the following verses about the scriptures given to the Christians, which Muhammad is saying is in the possession of Jews and Christians in his day. So if Adamu is right and the Jews and Christians were not, in fact, in possession of those writings, which we call the Old and New Testament, then his God is, in fact, wrong, which only proves my point. He's not the true God. Now, he also tried to attack the integrity and trustworthiness of the Bible by saying it contains contradictions. The only one he mentioned very weakly was Paul's account of his Damascus Road experience, where he speaks of uh, people seeing and not hearing and so forth. Well, when you check the, the Greek grammar, it's very clear that there's something different going on in both of those passages. In one case, it's saying that they heard a sound. Uh, and in the other case, it's saying that they didn't understand or it wasn't intelligible to them what that sound was saying. So there's no discrepancy or contradiction here in the Bible. He, he also claimed, uh, in contradistinction to what I pointed out about the attributes of Yahweh, that Yahweh is presented as weak in the Bible because Yahweh wrestled with Jacob in Genesis 32. But this doesn't prove that God is weak. It only proves that God condescended and did something with his creatures that's no no different than what parents often do with their children. I'm often found on the floor wrestling with my children. That doesn't prove that I'm weaker than them. Uh, but the fact is, when we look at the Quran, we do find, and Adamu didn't present any contrary evidence or response to this, we find that Allah very clearly is portrayed as ignorant. Repeatedly, Allah in the Quran does not say, thus saith the Lord. He says, perhaps, maybe, hopefully, I wish, and so forth. In fact, Allah even says, inshallah, if Allah wills, in the Quran. Allah is not a God who speaks with certainty because he's not omniscient. Allah is also not incorporeal. Surprisingly, uh, Adamu said that the God of the Bible is presented as an anthropomorphic being because it says he created man in his image. But according to the Bible, the image of God in man is spiritual. That's why scripture says that having fallen, God is now redeeming us and transforming us back into the divine image. That doesn't mean that God is changing our physical anatomy. It's referring to the fact that God is making us holy, whereas before we were unholy. The Quran, on the other hand, and the Hadith very clearly say that Allah is a corporeal being. He has anatomical features. He appeared to uh, Muhammad in a form. He touched Adam or Muhammad with his hands. Uh, he stroked Adam's back. Allah is a corporeal being. Adamu even admitted that his God is seated upon a throne held up by eight angels. Well, if Allah is seated on a throne held up by eight angels, then Allah is not an infinite spirit. He's not everywhere. He's also uh, uh, not uh, 
consistent with the character of God presented in the Bible. Adamu had no answer to the fact that Allah, uh, in the uh, Islamic sources, approves of Muhammad's sins. He approves of Muhammad taking the wife of his adopted son. He approves of Muhammad sleeping with his slave girl in the, lo in the house of one of his other wives. He approves of Muhammad marrying a six-year-old girl and, and bedding her at nine years old. Whereas God in the Bible, by contrast, very clearly condemns these wicked actions when his people engage in them. One minute. Muhammad One minute. is not chastised by Allah. David and other saints who sin are chastised by God. And that's because Yahweh is holy and Allah and Muhammad are wicked. Uh, finally, I pointed out that the God of the Bible is triune. Here, uh, Adamu had no answer to the biblical passages that I cited. I referred to Genesis 1, 1 through 3, Genesis 1, 26. I also referred to John 1, 1 through 3, and Matthew 28, 19, all of which teach that God is triune. Adamu said uh, that God divided himself into three persons. That's uh, impossible, but that's not the Christian position. God didn't divide himself. The persons of the Trinity share a common essence in its entirety. All three persons, they're not divided. They're not like a pie that can be cut up into third. The triune God of the Bible is the true God. Muhammad said that God is not triune. He even confused Mary as one of the members of the Trinity, once again showing Allah is not omniscient, and Allah is not the same God as the God revealed to the prophets. And I conclude with that. All right, thank you, Anthony. Now, Adamo, are you ready? Yes. Okay, you're going to well, have to... Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'll start I, whenever you I, start. Antonio Roger said that Allah has already told Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Muslims should judge themselves according to the Bible. That we should refer to... Uh, refer to we, we, have, we have to ask Christians. So the question is that which books that Allah is speaking here? Was it the, uh, or the Bible or the Torah and Injil? Do you have? Do you people have the original Torah or Injil? Paul written letters. How did Paul written letters or John, Paul, John, um, uh, Matthew, Mark, uh, Matthew, Luke, and John uh, theories or uh, writings become the Torah and the Injil that Allah is speaking about? Have spoken about? How did Injil or Torah become a Paul letter? In which way? You have to understand that first. In which way did Paul written letters become the Injil of Prophet? Isa, according to Quran, Allah gave that Injil to Prophet Isa alayhi salam. He didn't give it to, to Paul. He gave it to Prophet Isa alayhi salam. When did uh, 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 Paul have access to that in jail. When did he have it? When did Paul have access to that in jail? When, it, when did Matthew, Mark, and Luke have access to that in jail? Is there any evidence of that? We are looking, we are, we are want evidence beyond what the Paul, Matthew, Mark, and, uh, and John have it. Not the only uh, sit down and write whatever you like. Even look in, uh, in, uh, in Luke 1 1. He said that he saw people are writing this book. That's why he sat down and wrote his own. So when, where, uh, where did they get the original text and rewrite it? Is there any evidence of that? We need evidence of that first. Okay? So you have made mention that uh, uh, Allah has... Let me tell you, Allah has already programmed everything. Like internet, Allah is there but is watching everybody. He is doing everything. He knows even what is in your heart. He programmed everything, like internet. He programmed everything in this world. He is everywhere. We are praying in our home. Even if you are praying in, our, in your house, in your house, Allah knows it, and he will reward, record it, and he will reward you. In the uh, Quran, Allah said that what you have, what you have read, if what you are, you are going to, what you saw is what you are going to read. What does that mean? Do you think Allah did not know all these things? He is there, but he is watching every when Jesus was in this world. What did he say? He did he didn't know what is happening in Africa while he was in, 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 in Jerusalem. Did he know what is going on in Africa during that time? Or in Egypt? Did he know? He was even sleeping when they wake him that uh, the rain is, uh, is the one to uh, sung in the river. Jesus is there, but he didn't know anything. So we have to, we need to, to give us evidence beyond what Paul have written. Why did he get his own evidences? The, the, what, 
according to Bible, the Garden of Eden. What are the topic, if possible, I want to debate it with you, uh, Anthony Rogers or David Wood. The Garden of Eden, which you people, with the Bible, with the Yahweh, the God of the Bible, claim that this Garden of Eden is in this world, according to God. But there is no any location of this Garden of Eden. The geographers of this world have already demarcated. There is no any evidence why the Garden of Eden. How can God say that there is Garden of Eden in this world? Well, there is no any evidence of it. He said that the Garden of Eden, the original sin took place in this Garden of Eden. One minute. Where is the Garden of Eden? Where is the fruit of knowledge, uh, this, the, 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 the forbidden fruit? Even though some Christians claim that this Garden of Eden, the fruit of Noah has destroyed it. But there are other plants. How comes other plants, mongoes, bananas, other survive on, on not only uh, unless the, uh, not the, the forbidden of fruit? How can that be possible? Why is that original thing that Jesus came to die for? Why is that Garden of Eden? Did the Garden of Eden, did the original sin originally or really took place? There is, is there any evidence of that? So we don't have evidence. How can God Yahweh of the Bible have already fabricated all these things to brainwash people? That this is the true and the true God. This I love you. What kind of love? Love is to love people is to give them. Don't, don't eat this thing. It will harm your body. How to live your life in this world is part of love. Allah have give us everything, detail in detail. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Thank you uh, for everyone who's tuning in right now. We are having a live debate on the topic, who is the true God, the Yahweh of the Bible or the Allah of the Quran? Anthony Rogers versus Adamo Bakari. We have finished our opening statements and our first round of responses. We're going to go ahead now on to our second round of responses. Five minutes from each participant. Anthony, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. I'll start when you start talking. Well, it's clear to me that Adamu is not yet in this debate uh, this evening. Uh, so far, we've heard uh, logical fallacies like straw man defining the doctrine of the Trinity as God dividing himself into three persons rather than saying that God is three persons who possess a common nature or essence or, or being. Uh, we've heard him say that uh, Jesus has a son or ask if Jesus has a son. He's now talking about the, the Garden of Eden, which is a red herring. Uh, he, he even says he wants to debate that topic with David. Uh, Adamu, I invite you to... Uh, stay present in this debate, actually get into this debate this evening before you start thinking about losing a, a debate to David on a very different topic. Uh, going back to my original point, I, I made it very clear that the Quran says that the scriptures that were in the possession of Jews and Christians at the time of Muhammad are affirmed in the Quran as the word of God. They are uh, inspired by him, they contain guidance and light, and therefore Christians are to judge by them. Adamu, in, uh, in contradiction of his prophet, in contradiction of his God, is telling us that those books were not possessed by Jews and Christians, that in fact Allah was giving Muhammad false information. And so since our debate topic tonight is whether or not Allah is the true God, whether or not Allah is the same God who revealed himself to the prophets, Adamu has brought, I think, the best evidence showing that Allah isn't God, because he's saying that his God was in error. Uh, I also pointed out that Muhammad, according to Surah 1094, was told to go and ask the Jews and Christians if his revelations agree with what they have in the scriptures. If they did not possess the scriptures, then Allah was giving Muhammad bad advice. Indeed, uh, Adamu here can't even follow his God's own bad advice because he seems to recognize just how bad it really is. Uh, in response to my observation that Allah is not omnipresent, it seems to me that Adamu is basically admitting that. He admits that his God is on a throne. When he wants to talk about Allah being present in some sense, he just says that it's Allah's knowledge, which is actually what the Islamic sources teach. Allah is not personally present, but somehow his seeing is, which means that Allah can somehow be seated on his throne, limited to the throne, while his attribute of omniscience can be here. And the problem with that is that means there's a bifurcation between Allah and his attributes. But I thought Allah was absolutely one. How's Allah over here when his attributes are in some other place? Moreover, it's not even true to say that Allah is omniscient. Allah is not omniscient. Allah does not speak with absolute certainty in the Quran. He says, perhaps this, perhaps that. Adamu didn't answer those passages. 
His God is also not incorporeal. He has a form according to his God. He touched his prophet with his hand. He does other things according to the Quran with his literal anatomical features. His God is not an infinite spirit. He's not omniscient. He's not omnipresent. He is not Yahweh. Moreover, the character of his God he still has not defended. When his prophet engaged in heinous acts, his prophet, his God approved of them. His prophet said, good boy, Muhammad. But when the, the God of the Bible observes sin in his saints, he rebukes them and punishes them for it, thus showing his holy opposition to all sin and evil and the certainty of the fact that he's going to judge the world in righteousness. Allah is not righteous. Yahweh is. Allah is not the true God. Finally, the God of the Bible is triune, as I pointed out. Genesis 1, 1 through 3, Genesis 1, 26, John 1, 1 through 3, Matthew 28, 19. I could easily cite other passages, but Adamu has not even dealt with one of those that I've already brought up. The Quran contradicts this in Surah 4, 171, in Surah 112, in numerous other passages. In fact, the Quran says God's not even a father, but that's very clearly what Moses taught in, De in Exodus 4, in Deuteronomy 32, and other places. Jesus clearly taught the fatherhood of God. Adam is over here uh, caught up on... Uh, Adam is caught up on uh, whether... What, what, one second, whose audio is that? I, I paused the time. Whose audio is that? We 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 heard Hello? some we heard some audio in the background. Is someone watching? No, I'm not. No, it's not for here. Okay, okay. Uh, all right, Anthony, I'm going to start your time again. Whenever you start. How much time do I have? Uh, you have a minute and six seconds, so I won't call one minute because you have a minute and six seconds. Okay. Okay. Uh, so Adamu is not dealing with what's been stated to him today. Uh, he's complaining about these incidental things. He's talking about bananas and, and the Internet and things of that nature. But he's not dealing with the real issues that are being presented. I've made it very clear. His prophet says that I am to judge by what I find written in the previous scriptures. His prophet was told to listen to what was said in the previous scriptures. He's not, do, he's not telling me to do what his God told me to do. And he's not doing what his God told his prophet to do. So clearly, Adamu doesn't think his God knows better. He doesn't listen to his prophet. He doesn't follow his prophet. He's calling me to kufr and unbelief. Uh, and to believe that uh, his God is ignorant, which I already believe. You don't have to persuade me of that. Uh, you know, you, you attack the Bible. You say things like, uh, uh, we can't trust the authors of the gospel. We don't know who they were. Of course we know who they were. The superscription on every single one of all of our gospels all throughout the world, no matter how far back we go in history, is unanimous. It's always kata markon, kata matheon, and so forth, according to Matthew, according to Mark. These Gospels were written by the authors the that time. inscribed them, and we know their biographies because they're recorded in those same books. All right, we are getting a bit of an echo somehow. Uh, not sure how to stop that in the middle. If anyone has headphones, this would be a good time to put them on, but I, I think we can still hear Anthony uh, clearly. So, Adamo, are you, are you ready? You've got five minutes whenever you want to start. Okay, okay. So, uh, uh, Antonio Rogers uh, uh, is uh, refused to address the issues of the the authenticity of the of the of the uh, Paul written letters. That where did Paul get these verses from? Where from where did he get the chapters? Who inspired him? There is there any evidence that God inspired Paul to write these letters? Did he inspire him one after the other that he should read, uh, write these letters? Is there any evidence of that? Yes or no? There is no any evidence. So if, if if these words are not from God, if Paul's words are not from God, how can we take it as God's words? How? Paul, there is the, the Matthew. Matthew who? Who is their parent? There is no any biography even. There is no any biography of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So how can, but in the Quran, Allah have already uh, 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 revealed that. He revealed that there is evidence of revelation. No matter, even if you agree or you did not agree, but there is a word called revelations in the Quran. And there is no any word revelation to Paul, Matthew, Mark, or John in the, in the, in the, in the, in the world. Even according to, according to the uh, Luke, Jesus himself, I'm sorry, according to Isaiah, Jesus himself, when he uh, came to the, uh, when he entered the synagogue, he read Isaiah book. What is his book? Isaiah book is Jewish book. 
and Jewish book, uh, uh, Jewish book, and Jewish God is not Christ, is not Jesus. According to you people, Jesus is your only one God, one God. He is not uh, a, a Jewish God. So where are the original Quran is speaking about? It's thought about the original Injil. Why is the original Injil? Where is the original Torah that was revealed directly to only Prophet Isa alayhi salam? That's to Jesus. Where is the original one that was only revealed? Where is gospel according to Jesus? That Yahweh sent this thing to Jesus. Why is it? Where is the or we need the original one so that we can know that these words are from God. All your the verses you are quote, you are quoting from the Bible, they are not Bible uh, Bible uh, God words. They are not God words. It is unknown writers and historians that sat down and wrote what they want. They are not the original word of the God from the, uh, God of the, the, that created all creations. So how can we believe that? Secondly, you have talked about Trinity. According to Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are one. So, uh, despite the coma between them and and between them that divided these three individuals, you have made them one. How can any in which grammatical sentence can this three person be one single identity? How? According to, we have attended schools, like I told you, that we were not told that we have attended school with Christians. In English class, we were not told that three persons with a comma in between them can be single one person. According to English grammar. Then you are talking about the presence of God, the omnipresence. I have told you Allah is a presence, is everywhere. What you are doing, Allah knows that. And he is going to record, if Allah is not here, then I can do whatever I like, since Allah is not here. Where is, if Jesus, people, you people claim that you are God, I, Jesus sent you Holy Spirit, which is in you, people. But there are many abstracts and uh, things that you people didn't know. There are, he didn't know anything about science. He didn't know about anything about banking and finance. He didn't know anything about uh, and, uh, anatomy. Your God didn't know anything. God, Allah of the, uh, the creator of heaven and earth, have explained this thing. Even you people are going uh, uh, Quran using scientific, not your God uh, uh, knowledge. You are using science against Quran, not your God against Quran. If you people are debating Muslim, you have to debate it using your God knowledge, not using science. Quran has its own knowledge of science. Knowledge of science, art, economics, and whatever. Prophet Mama Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would, would come with all these things. But you are going to teach us nothing. Teach humanity nothing. Nothing did it. The only thing you people rely on is he died for your sin. That even though you claim he died for your sin, but we are still committing sins, repenting, right. making a confession. Of sin. If he really died for your sin, why are you still co confessing and uh, uh, repenting of your sin. That's if you can die for my sin, let me die so that I can continue to enjoy my life, do whatever I like in this world. But he died for your sins. That's why the fact that the original spirit which Jesus claimed to die Adamo, for you're it. over. Okay. You're okay. Good. Okay. All right, for everyone uh, tuning in right now, we just finished up our second round of responses. We are going to go on to our Third round of responses, five minutes from each participant. And Anthony Rogers, you can start when you're ready. And and guys, we know we are. Um, this is the first time we've done this. We are getting a little bit of an echo. I think the speakers are still clear. We'll have to figure that out in the future. Uh, Adamo, I think it, the echo might be coming from yours. If you can, uh, I, I know you still have to be able to hear everything Anthony is saying, but if you could turn down the audio uh, a little bit and we can see if that if that helps. I don't know. Um, but, uh, regardless, I think we can still hear Anthony clearly, even if we hear a little bit of an echo. So Anthony, you could go ahead and start your five minute final response. And then we'll have our conclusions after, uh, this final res I mean, this final response from each side. Yeah. One thing is painfully obvious for everyone who's listening so far to what's been happening in this debate. 
And that is not simply that I disagree with the idea that Allah is the true God, omniscient, omnipotent, and so forth, but neither does my opponent, because my opponent simply cannot submit to Allah's revelation and to what Allah says in the Quran. According to Surah 544 through 48, Christians and Jews have the Holy Scriptures and were to judge by those Holy Scriptures because they contain the very revelation of God. This is what his prophet said about the books that were in the possession of Muhammad's of his contemporaries. In opposition to that, Adamu is saying, we have no evidence that these books are the words that God revealed. Well, then why does Allah say they are in the Quran? If Adamu doesn't believe it, then he should stop being a Muslim. I don't have to stop believing that. I'm not a Muslim. Uh, Adamu very clearly doesn't think his God is omniscient. I gave him evidence that his God's not omniscient, but apparently he came here already believing that. Uh, the Quran in numerous passages, Surah 661, 665, 669, shows that Allah is ignorant. He says, perhaps this might happen, perhaps that might happen. He doesn't know what's going to happen. He wants to claim that his God has these great insights into science. I haven't heard any great insight yet, uh, but the fact is, and it's not you know, something that people are ignorant of. I didn't think I had to explain it to anyone. The God of the Quran butchers science at every turn. He thinks semen proceeds from between the backbone and the ribs. He thinks shooting stars are actually missiles being shot at demons to keep them out of heaven from prying into the divine presence. Uh, he thinks the sun sets in a muddy pool. Your God is not uh, a scientific sage. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And that's why, I hate to be frank with you, science was not a product of the Islamic worldview. So science itself, the discipline of science, was a product of Western Christendom. You can find this out from numerous scholars, such as Stanley Jackie, uh, Rodney Stark. Numerous scholars recognize that science was born in a Christian cultural milieu, not in the context of pagan Islamic uh, you know, worship of, of Allah, a God who can't even get math right. Uh, your God, uh, when he tries to talk about dividing uh, the inheritance, you see when you add up the figures that Allah doesn't even know how to do simple fractions. Uh, your God is not omniscient. He's not the foundation for anything beneficial for humanity in the world. And in fact, I mean, uh, when you look at what happens in any society where Islam has been uh, really in, uh, instantiated and where it really comes to expression, it's not a, a a heaven on earth. You know, if you want to talk about the Garden of Eden not really being on earth, well, I can assure you it's not really in any Islamic country on the planet. That's why Muslims constantly love to flee those places and come to the West. That's why, in fact, uh, my opponent, I'm sure, would love to live in any Christian country over any Islamic country, uh, especially since he doesn't think that his God's got the goods to uh, dictate how he should live his life. He tells us that uh, the, the biographies of, uh, uh, he says we can't trust Paul, for example, he said because the word revelation is never used in Paul's writings. Apparently, the Quran is revealed because it uses the word revelation. Simply because it says so, that makes it so. Well, I, I've got news for you, Adamu. The Apostle Paul, if that's your criteria, the Apostle Paul does say that he received revelation. In Galatians 1, chapter 12, Paul says that he neither received from man his gospel, nor was he taught it by any man, but he received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. Here is the gospel, the Injil of Jesus. He revealed it to Paul, he revealed it to Matthew, he revealed it to Mark, Luke, and John. You're simply ignorant, not only of your own book, but of the book you came to debate. You're ignorant of both. And you stepped into this. I have no idea why. Uh, you really should hang up your uh, hat and, and stop debating. Uh, you're, you're not doing your prophet or your God any service. Uh, you're simply exposing them to open ridicule and shame One as being uh, ignorant and uh, sham artist. You know, that's why you have no answer to the fact that your prophet was a scurrilous individual. He engaged in wicked deeds, and your God was apparently quite pleased with them. Your God was pleased with your prophet taking the wife of his adopted son just because he had lustful desires for her. Your God was pleased when your prophet would mistreat a blind man, when he would order poets assassinated because they insulted him and hurt his feelings. Your God was not a moral man, or your, your prophet was not a moral man, and your God wasn't moral either because your God did not reprove your wicked prophet and he didn't chastise him for his sin. And and here's another thing. you uh, uh, Your God is not omnipresent. He's not everywhere. You admit that if he were not everywhere, then he couldn't see the actions that you're engaging in. Well, I quite, I quite agree with that. If your God is not everywhere, then he doesn't know things that you could engage in sin with impunity. Well, the fact is, as I showed you from the Quran, your God is not everywhere. He's seated on the Time. throne. He's 
rolled up by eight angels, and therefore that's why your prophet probably thought it was okay to engage in sin because he thought his God couldn't see him. All right, thank you, Anthony. We are wrapping up um, the final responses, and then we'll have after this we'll have concluding remarks from both sides. Um, Adamo, you have five minutes for your third response. Okay. So uh, what Anthony Rogers failed to note is that he is comparing his God with prophet of our Allah. He is comparing, instead of him to compare his God with our Allah. So he's comparing his God with, our, with the prophet of our Allah. So there is no way you can compare your God with the prophet of our Allah and claim that your God is the original creator of this world. Your God, according to Bible, he said that he created, uh, cre he created this world through his son. He created this world through his son. How did he create uh, created this uh, world through his son? How did he create it? He made scientific errors in the beginning of how he created sun before he created uh, he created uh, plants before he created sun so how can that survive he made scientific error where is the scientific data scientific knowledge in the bible you are saying that all these things they are borrowing knowledge all the sciences that we are talking about they didn't get the knowledge from the bible what we are talking about where did you get the knowledge like the knowledge of embryology in the Quran, there is no anywhere in this world that first introduced knowledge except within the Quran. People are claiming that the Greek, that, that, that the Greek uh, were the one who first introduced knowledge. How? What scientific instrument did they get to use to, 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 on, to, 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 to discover that? What scientific in, instrument did they use? There is no any scientific instrument during that time. It's just a claim that so that you can, you can, you can suppress islam and make it look like the way it, it is now so you are making claim that to prove your religion or your god is the real god of which he is not according to bible i told you that uh, 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 jacob beat your god how can a human being if a human being can beat your god your god there is no any way a human being if they meet again he cannot beat him say chance Kidnap your God for good 40 days. Your God has no any power to withdraw himself, to forcefully beat Satan, defeat Satan. Satan used Judah against your Satan and expose his hiding places. Satan used his agent to crucify your God, to strip him naked before everybody and, cru and, uh, and crucify him. Even though some verses of the Bible is saying that they hung him on a tree. Like Acts chapter Three, uh, 5 verse 30 said that Jesus was hung on a tree, not crucified. And in, in, in Mark chapter 19, verse 28 to 33, he said he drinks uh, 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 olive and die immediately. That means it's like poison killed him. So how can that be possible? As a God, as a woman God, a woman can defeat a God. If a woman can defeat a God, how can that God protect him? In which way? In which way can that God protect me? And what makes you think that if human being can beat God now, what makes you think that they won't beat him whenever they meet him? What makes you think that? Your God never defeated even Satan if once. He never defeated even Satan once in his entire life, according to Bible. There is no way. He said he tempted him. But Jesus defeated. How can this, Satan willingly, willingly free Jesus so that he, because you don't want him to die of starvation? He free him. Then your God was in Satan for 40, 40 days. There is no. I talked to you about the 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 the, the origin of the Injil. You didn't talk me. Talk to me. Injil is not even if Jesus inspired him. Why is the original Quran is talking? about the original Injil, not the one that Jesus is sent to Paul. Despite the fact that Jesus did not send anything to Paul, there is no any evidence of that. 
Paul did not receive any revelation of what he wrote. It is written letters that he wrote his personal life. How his personal life become a word of God? Th that the law, the law of God that you people are supposed to be follow. God is sending his book as a guidance to people. Bible is not guidance principles or, cons it's like a, a, or constitution to people, to you Christians, on how to live your life. But Quran is the guidance book for all the whole humanity on how to live their life economically, politically, military, scientifically, and what are you? Time. So then, how can we rely on Bible if there is no any other law? Like in judiciary, how can you judge people with the Bible? That, that's time, if Adam. Person, how can you judge it? There is no any... Bible is not a guiding principle that guides Adamo. one being. It's life on this earth. Adamo, you're over time. Pardon? Oh, you're, you're, I was just telling you, you're, you're over time. You, did, you didn't address the issues of where is the original... Adamu, no, 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 no your, 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 your time is up. So now we're going to go into conclusions. You're going to have uh, five more minutes after, uh, after Anthony here to conclude. All right. Uh, Anthony, you ready for your conclusion? So everyone who's tuning in, we are debating here. Uh, who is the true God, the Yahweh of the Bible or the Allah of the Quran? Anthony Rogers versus Adamo Bakri. Um, we are getting a bit of an echo, but uh, can't really fix that in the middle of the debate, and we can still hear both speakers. So uh, we just have to put up with an with an echo a little bit. We'll try and uh, correct that for next time. Anthony, you can start whenever you want with your five minute conclusion. Anthony, did you mute yourself? I did. How embarrassing! That's automatic uh, forfeit. <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right, by way of conclusion, I have argued in this debate that my opponent is obligated not only to acknowledge my responsibility to judge this question by the previous scripture, but also his responsibility to do so in light of his God's own command to his false prophet in Surah 1094. My opponent has utterly skirted these passages and refuses to deal with them. Those passages speak of the scriptures that were in the possession of the Christians at that time, and says that Jews and Christians were in possession of the very words of Allah, the very words of God. Accordingly, he has to show that his God is the God of the prophets, the God who revealed himself in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. He didn't do that. He didn't even attempt to do that. Moreover, my opponent did not adequately deal with my observations about the very different character uh, uh, or attributes between the true God and Allah. The true God is omnipresent, incorporeal, and omniscient. Allah is clearly not omnipresent. He's seated on a throne. That's why Islamic scholars say Allah is not present. He's not in this dunya. He's seated above the seven heavens on top of a throne borne up by eight angels. That is not the God of the Bible who, while he can manifest himself in heaven or on earth, is everywhere and transcends all spatial limitations. Jeremiah 23, Psalm 139. 1 Kings 8, Acts 17. His God is also not incorporeal. He didn't deal with the Sahih narrations where Muhammad speaks of Allah's form, speaks of Allah's hands, his palms, his fingers, and speaks of Allah appearing to people in his true form, revealing his shin, and so on and so forth. His God is an embodied being. He's not an infinite spirit like the God of the Bible. His God is also not omniscient. His God doesn't apparently, according to Adamu, know what the books of Scripture are because he thought the Jews and Christians were in possession of them. His God doesn't know what the doctrine of the Trinity is because he thinks Mary's a member of the Trinity. His God apparently doesn't know as much as Adamu that the Scriptures have been corrupted because he tells Christians and Jews they contain guidance and light and they're to judge by them and tells his prophet to do that as well. We, he also never adequately addressed the fact that his God is a co-signer of his prophet's wicked action. His prophet was wicked. He stole the life of his adopted son. And then, to cover it up, he abolished adoption. There's no adoption in the Islamic world. The wonderful, beautiful reality of adoption is not found in Islam because his prophet wanted his own son's wife. That's wicked, that's evil, and his prophet said that his God was a co-signer of these wicked actions. He also never adequately dealt with the fact that the Bible teaches the doctrine of the Trinity. It teaches it in the very first chapter of the Bible, the very first chapter of the New Testament in, in John's Gospel. At least. It teaches it all throughout the Old and New Testaments, but his God contradicts it, even when he can't even get it right. His God is not a father like the God of the Bible, uh, and so uh, 
you know, no wonder he wants to pretend that uh, the incarnation is somehow uh, something to be ridiculed. The incarnation is not a denial of God being omnipotent, omniscient, and omnibenevolent, and all of those things. The incarnation is the reality that God, in order to save humanity, took on himself, in addition to his divine nature, a human nature, so that he might live a perfect human life, which his wicked prophet never did, that he might therefore save humanity and rescue us from the power of the devil, which power lied in the very fact that man was sinful and needed to be redeemed from it. That's why the cross was not a defeat. The cross was actually a victory. That's why the Apostle Paul, who my opponent keeps ridiculing, could confidently declare in Colossians 2 that Jesus, through the cross, defeated and conquered Satan. He made a public spectacle of him and triumphed over him by the cross. He undid the works of the devil that brought man into sin and captivity and therefore made him liable to judgment. Jesus did all of that for us by becoming a human being, and he did it in accordance with predictive prophecy. In fact, in Genesis 3.15, God promised that the seed of the woman, the coming Messiah, would crush the serpent's head, Satan, even at the same time he would uh, uh, sustain a painful wound in his own heel. This is one of those predictions I mentioned you can find in the Bible, but by contrast can't find a lick of in the Quran because Muhammad's God was ignorant. Adamu's God is ignorant. Adamu's God doesn't know the future. Adamu's God can't save. Adamu's God is powerless, and that's why he wants to talk about bananas and uh, the Internet and ants and and all the other peculiar things that he keeps bringing up out of uh, thin air. Adamu's God is not Yahweh. There is no God but Yahweh. And Muhammad, for denying the Father and the Son, is an Antichrist, according to 1 John chapter 2. Muhammad was not a prophet. Adamu, I call you away from your false prophet and all of the other Muslims who are with you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as the only Savior of sinners. Right. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, that was Anthony's conclusion. And now we will have a five minute conclusion from Adamu. OK, so uh, uh, Bible, Bible was not. What is Bible? Bible is just a book. It's not an Injil. It's not a Torah for God. God did not name the word Bible, did not na- name the book, uh, the book Bible. It wasn't God that named that book Bible. Torah that Allah is talking about is not that Bible that you people have today. Allah is talking about the Torah and Injil, which he gave, which he gave it to Moses, uh, uh, to Prophet Musa and Prophet Isa, alayhi salam. So this book, Allah has already withdrew it. There is no any that book today. You get the inf- information about the book, then you sat down and wrote it. The original book is not there. Quran itself will be withdrawn by withdrew by Allah in the next generations to come. This is what Allah said. This book you have, and according to John 1.1, 1, 1, you claim that Bible, uh, Jesus is the word of God. Where in the Bible that Jesus become the word of God? In the beginning, it was a word. It wasn't said it was the word of God. In the beginning was a word. The word was with God, and the the word was God. It wasn't said the, in the beginning was the word of God. So where, how can Jesus become the word of that God? Why not Bible? Bible is also a word of God. Is Bible God? Is Bible God? Is Bible Jesus brother? Bible and Jesus are both what of your God? Is Jesus bro, uh, Bible brother? Quran is also the word of God of Allah of our Allah. Is Quran the word of the brother to Jesus? Is Bible Jesus uh, the brother to Jesus? No. It's still yet on it on the issue of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. You didn't tell us that is it the original angel that Allah is talking about? No, it's not. These uh, letters are Paul writing letters. I have told you, and there is no any clear evidence that Allah. The, if you go to Quran, there is what we call sababun nuzul. That before a chapter or a verse will reveal to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there is reasons for that verse to, re- to be revealed. Before a verse, sababun nuzul, go and research it. Each and every verse of the Quran and chapter, there is a reason before that verse or chapter will be revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When the in the case of Bible, people or non-people just sit down and read what they want. 
so that they can get what they want. According to Quran, say that go to those who wrote the, the, the Bible and claim it is from God. There is no, even though you keep editing and changing, many biblical scholars, very biblical uh, scholars, uh, scholars, professors, clearly said that this Bible was not the original copy of the Bible. They have even stated that you have changed everything in it. So how can that be the, the, the Bible? Still, Bible is not the word of God. God did not change this thing. I have given you that Satan's Jesus never defeated Satan. Your God never defeated Satan. Jacob beat your God and wrestled him down. Satan kidnapped Jesus for good 40 days. Jesus did not do anything within his power to free himself. On the cross, he loudly cried for help. Your, his father abandoned him. He said that according to my will, I don't want to die. But according to your will, if you want to kill me, kill me. But according, he, he killed Jesus intentionally, according to the uh, to Bible, if you can go in this way. So how can Jesus or Yahweh, or can be Yahweh or Yahweh can be true creator of this world? There is no way. There is no way. So you have to... One minute. This, the issue of original sin, which I told you, is that this original sin and the Garden of Earth, I ask you that some Christians told me that the forbidden of fruit was the Garden of Eden. The, of, uh, the Garden of Eden was destroyed by no fruit. So, so that uh, on that reason, why the garden disappeared and the tree of knowledge disappeared. That's why I ask you that. Why is it that other fruit survive, but not the garden, the forbidden fruit, which Adam and Eve ate? It was on that case that. Uh, Jesus came to die for world sin, on that original sin, that Jesus was sent to die for sin. In the reality, there is no this Garden of Eden in this world. So how can we be certain, how can we be sure that this God is the true God? Some people wrote, sat down and wrote, their, and, and, and wrote their, their, their stories and claim it is from God, of which Time. there is no evidence that this Garden of Eden ever existed in this world. All right, thank you, Adamo. That concludes our debate on who is the true God, the Yahweh of the Bible, or the Allah of the Quran. Uh, we were going to have about half an hour of Q&A, but we're getting an echo, and so probably, uh, you know, uh, save some for the future. But I'll, I'll go ahead and give uh, each participant an opportunity to ask uh, one or two short questions with some short answers. Anthony, do you have a question for Adamu. All right, you, you've got your audio muted. Um, honestly, and I, I don't mean this disrespectfully, I don't really have any question. I mean, he didn't answer anything I said in the debate. So uh, I think, Adamu, I'll let you pick one, actually, if you want to address it. Um, I'll give you another shot to address at least one of the arguments, and uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, would, would you like to pick one in specific, Anthony? And then Adamu can ask you a question back, and then we'll wrap up. Um. Oh well. Uh, sure. What is the uh, uh, justification for the Quran's usage repeatedly of uncertain terms on the part of Allah? That is, why does Allah in the Quran say things like perhaps, maybe, hopefully, and so forth? If He knows everything. All right, Adamu, I'll give you uh, two minutes to respond. Then you can ask a question to Anthony, and he'll have two minutes to respond. Well, I don't know the reasons of why Allah said that. That's okay. No, he, didn't, he didn't know either, so that's good. No, no, let him talk. Yes. Oh, sorry. oh, sorry. I said I don't know the reason why Allah said that in the Quran. Yeah. Okay. Yes, because I interfere with what Allah have already planned for himself. And for us, so I don't know. I don't have to. Say, I don't have a word to say on that. Okay. Do you have a question for Anthony? Yes, I have some questions for him. I'll, I'll give you. I'll, uh, 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 yeah, I'll get. I'll get. I'll give you a question, and then Anthony, you'll have two minutes to respond. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So, Anthony, I want to. Uh, I want us to clarify this thing first. No, not first. You have, one, you have one question, Adamu. 
Okay, one question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, the original Injil that is, to, is is Bible the original Injil that was sent to that Quran is talking about is Bible. Uh, the, uh, all, right, Anthony, is there, all, right, all right, Anthony, you have uh, so is so Adamu. The question is: is, that, is the Bible the original Injil? Yes. Okay, you got two minutes to answer. Answer, Anthony. Okay, it's it's clear from the Quran. I mean, there's there's numerous terms that are used to refer to the previous scriptures. Words like Torah in reference to the law of Moses, Zabur in reference to the Psalms of David, Injil. Uh, and when you look at how these terms are used in the Quran, it's very clear that these terms refer to what was in the possession of Jews and Christians, what they considered to be revelation from God. Since we know what Jews and Christians considered to be the Torah, the Zabur, the Injil, there's no question that it includes writings such as those of the Apostle John. In fact, if you check in the uh, Sirah literature, for example, Ibn Yitzhak's Sirat Ruzul Allah, you'll see that positive reference is made to the Gospel of John as, in fact, a part of the Injil. So the Injil, according to your prophet, according to your book, the Quran, Surah 544, uh, other passages, Surah 7157, for example, says that uh, Christians have in their possession uh, the scriptures which uh, Muhammad can be found predicted in. If they didn't have those scriptures, then they couldn't look to, into them for predictions of Muhammad. And, of course, Muhammad's not found in them anyways. But the point is, your prophet thought that your God had revealed those books that were in the possession of Jews and Christians at the time of Muhammad. So we know what they possessed, and we know that they're the same things we possess today and call the gospel, the gospel as it is according to Matthew, Mark, John, and so forth. And by the way, I should point something out to you, uh, Nami, since I still have time. Uh, the, the, the Bible doesn't use the term gospel in reference to the four canonical books in the plural. They're all referred to as the one gospel. That's why you have at the heading of each gospel according to Matthew, according to Mark, according to Luke. It's the one gospel according to four witnesses. So there is only one gospel according to the New Testament, and it's the gospel as given to us by Christ That's done. through men like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All right. Uh, thank you, Anthony and Adamo. And if you guys wanted to discuss that further, that might be... Uh, what's that? Let me say what. Let me say something. Okay. When, okay. According to what... That means he confirmed that. Okay, but just, 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 just yeah. so you know, if, if you're if you're making an additional point, then I'll have to give Anthony an opportunity to respond. So if you want, guys want to go one minute, one minute for the end here? Agreed, agreed. Okay, one minute, one minute. Let's say that it was Allah who directed Muslims to go to, to ask Christians. That means Allah that sent the message. Since he believed the, the, the Quranic verse, that means Allah that sent that Quranic verse is the real Allah, is the real God of the universe. Allah is this. I, ho I hope you are getting what I'm saying. No, I'm not. No, no I wasn't either. Okay. You have said that Allah directed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to look into Bible. No. Am I right? I told him, uh, I said that your God told him to go, because remember, your prophet was an illiterate pagan, according to your sources, at least allegedly, so he couldn't read those scriptures. That's why he had to go to the Jews and Christians who possessed those scriptures and ask them, is what I'm saying correct? And, of course, that's why he was so angry with the Jews and had numerous Jews killed and beheaded and, of course, stole their lives because they said, no, you're not in our books. We can't find you there. You're not there. It never speaks of a wicked individual who would say that God is a cosigner of his evil actions. It never speaks of such a person. What do you mean by he cannot read that, those scriptures? Your prophet was an illiterate pagan. He, he says he couldn't read, remember? Remember when he, Angel Gabriel appeared to him in the cave of, of the Hira cave, he had to slap Muhammad around, he grabbed him, he choked him, because your prophet kept saying, I can't read, I can't read, I can't read. Okay, That's what Muslims tell us. So if your prophet couldn't read, then he had to go to people who were literate, he had to go to intelligent people and say, hey, 
Is this what the scriptures say? Because I'm having doubts. This spirit that's manhandling me in different places, he's telling me one thing. I want to know if it's true. So I'm coming to you to ask, is this what it says in your scriptures? And they kept saying, no, don't listen to that evil spirit. That evil spirit will lead you into falsehood and into evil, corrupt practices. Okay, let's give Adamo a, ch a chance to respond here. How can he believe you? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam never attend any school. He never he don't have any teachers. So okay. how can he understand? Okay. Excuse me. How can he understand what is in the Bible in the in the book that you are talking about? How can, can he understand it? Just if I come to you and say that, so is this thing true? I was attacked by Angel Gabriel. That this is what he have told me. So I come to you. Is this just you? Just without looking into the book. He just said, oh, no, don't agree with this because you want to protect your own. Don't agree with this uh, angel. He is not an, he's a devil. How can he agree with that? This logic, this logic is, 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 is not accurate. There is no way Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who never attended any school, who never attended any university can go to the Jews and ask them that, is this your book uh, true? Like you are making a claim out that what you have uh, what you are saying that they just tell him that yes this is not uh, don't listen to that uh, gabriel he is a liar without looking into the book is that possible just because i this they told him that even if he went to to, to them do you think that is possible prophet mama can go there without looking into the book despite the fact that he never went to any college he never attended any university by just saying, go, this one, this uh, angel is a devil. Don't listen to him. Just like that. All right. Uh, I, I think that's actually, uh, I know you guys could keep going back and forth. Um, it, and if you wanted to further discuss this issue, you guys uh, could, if you want, set up another discussion. And I'd be happy to uh, have it on my channel. Um, uh we will have to work on. We'll have to tweak the sound. I do have controls here for various things. I don't like pushing a pushing a button that I've never pushed before. Um, so, but yeah, we'll, we'll be sure to test everything uh, again uh, for the future. And I just wanted to uh, everyone to thank Anthony Rogers and uh, Adamo Bakari for the discussion here. If they want to have any further discussions uh, in the future, again, uh, happy to have them here. Thank you, everyone, for uh, participating. Thank you for everyone particip 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 participating in the chat. And we'll see you all again in the near future. In fact, very near future because Anthony and I will be live streaming again at 8 o'clock p.m. tonight. So I hope to see everyone there. God bless you all. God bless everyone. God bless you all. So are we going to have another debate with you, Antonio?